Hello and welcome. I recently switched over my home automation system to Home Assistant as I found it much more customizable than other available platforms such as HomeKit or uh, HomeBridge. One of the metrics that I wanted to add to Home Assistant was the amount of water used for the, for the house, including the water used for each zone set of the irrigation system. I had previously installed a water meter between the well and the house. Uh, the water meter is capable of sending pulse signals for every gallon that passes through it, and this specific meter also comes with a separate add-on device, which can read those pulse signals and keep track of the water usage. Unfortunately, this add-on device is not very API friendly and also somewhat expensive for personal use. So I set out to create a similar device that could read and report the water usage to my home assistant system. I had used the ESP32 boards for other purposes in the past and seeing how cheap and easy to use they are, I decided to utilize an ESP32 board for this purpose. Fortunately, Home Assistant also comes with an add-on called ESP Home, which allows users to flash ESP32 boards with configurable platforms using simple YAML format and have them automatically be discovered and accessible in Home Assistant. To start off, I created a prototype using a breadboard and an ESP32 board and a few simple other components. As you can see, the schematic is quite simple. I then hooked up this prototype to my home water meter to verify that it actually worked correctly. Unfortunately, my water meter was too far from my Wi-Fi access point, so I had to use my MacBook as a portable power source and a logger. The MacBook also did not have good Wi-Fi reception at the meter itself, so I ran a simple cable from the meter a little closer to my Wi-Fi access point. Finally, with a decent Wi-Fi reception and a water faucet opened up, the ESP32 board successfully connected to the network and I was able to verify that the board correctly reported the water usage to Home Assistant. Having been satisfied, I set off to build a prototype that I could install in a DIN rail enclosure and hook up to my home automation system. I found this enclosure on Amazon, which uh, looked big enough for the ESP32 board and also the couple of components that would be included on the board itself, but I just had to trim it a, a little bit on the edges to make it fit. Once the board was trimmed and a few holes were drilled for the screws, I fitted the board and also fitted the ESP32 headers into the proto board to make sure they fit and then started soldering them. My solder joints were not perfect, but they would work quite well. And here I'm just soldering the edges to kind of hold the headers in place. I then soldered on the uh, terminal blocks, which are used for the meter inputs and power. This particular board supports up to four meters, but it can be expanded. And then using 20 gauge strip wire, I connected all the components together. And you don't see this in the video, but I also installed an LED and a 1K resistor for a power indicator. Next, I mounted the board in the enclosure, installed the ESP32 board into the header pins, and opened up uh, the necessary holes for the screw terminal blocks, and also installed an external antenna for better Wi-Fi reception. This device will be mounted in a DIN enclosure box, which is metal, so it will have its own antenna, but for the time being, we're going to use this temporary antenna for testing. And finally, I added a couple of labels to visually indicate each input of the terminal blocks. And now with the board completed, uh, it was ready for testing. I did not want to go through the trouble of testing the device outside like I did with the prototype and seeing how I needed to run the cable from the meter to my utility room anyway, I decided to do the cable runs first before testing the device. Fortunately, I had installed an underground conduit for my irrigation system some time ago, so I used that two inch conduit to run the meter cables. I have a, a future irrigation zone set that I want to wire up as well, which will have another meter. So I, I taped two cables together to pull at once. 
And pulling the cables uh, was a pretty straightforward process. I pushed the fish line into the conduit until it came out on the other end. Hooked up the cables that are to be pulled and then pulled in the fish line from the other end of the conduit. I repeated this process from one valve box to the next until I pulled uh, the cables all the way to the main valve box which uh, also contains the main water meter. My conduit is approximately 500 feet long so this took some time to complete. But eventually I uh, got to the destination valve box, hooked up all the wires, rolled them up, zip tied them, and uh, closed all the valve boxes and uh, junction boxes and pulled the two cables into the utility room. Previously I had indicated which cable was connected to the meter and I used that one to connect to the device. I then powered up the device and it was ready for testing in Home Assistant. In ESP Home add-on dashboard, I clicked a new device and gave the device a name. Selected ESP32 as the device type and then clicked Added to added the YAML configuration. I pasted some YAML configuration here that I had used previously and just wanted to make sure I had the correct IDs and names. And notice that we only have one pin configured right now. That's because we only have one meter hooked up to the device but we can add more later. Once everything was correct, I clicked install and then manual download and modern format. And what it did here was basically con compile this configuration to a binary format. The compilation of the configuration took a few minutes, but after a while it completed and a, a binary file was downloaded to the computer. Then uh, I click close and ma install and manual download and clicked on the ESP Home uh, web portal. And here if you click connect, it'll give you an option to select the USB that the, the device is connected to. And then it, it, clicking on install and selecting the file that was just downloaded, a .bin file. And clicking install, it, it installs the binary or flashes the ESP32 with this binary. And this one took a few minutes uh, also to actually install it on the device. And now if we go back to ESP Home uh, dashboard, we'll see that the device is online now. The, the color has changed. And if we look at the logs, we can look at them wirelessly. We can see the configuration that was uh, installed on this device. It gives you the IP address and MAC address and so on. And then it shows you the logs for this meter. That we just configured. Now if you look on the bottom left you can see a notification and that notification is telling us that there's a new device that was discovered and we can configure it. Paste the encryption key from the YAML file for this device, select the location of the device which is the utility room and uh, now the device is available on Home Assistant. Well, one last thing that I wanted to add here was a utility meter to track the daily water usage of the main water valve. So I named the utility meter as the daily usage of the main water valve, selected the sensor that was configured uh, in the YAML file, the total sensor, and selected daily as the cycle. But one thing to note here is that periodically resetting is enabled. And this is important because if the ESP32 board is restarted, we don't want this utility meter to be reset to zero since all the metrics on the ESP32 board will be reset on the restart. And uh, I also wanted to add a monthly usage as well for the main water meter and it's basically the same thing except for it's going to reset every month. And now going back to the Home Assistant dashboard, we can see the utility meters that we just added and notice that the gallon amounts are incrementing and the reason why is because the water is on right now. Note also that the ESP32 device sensors that we configured in the YAML file are shown up here on the dashboard as well and they're incrementing just like the utility meter. Clicking on the utility meter details you can see the water usage over time and uh, the nice thing about Home Assistant is that you can configure automations and notifications such as uh, notifying you whenever the water has been running for a period of time. But I'm going to leave that up to your own imagination. Thank you for watching this video and if you would like the schematic or the YAML configuration that was used in this video, I will include it in my GitHub account which will be in the description.